In today's video for WooCommerce, I'm going to demonstrate a method that we can use to create more customized, more bespoke checkout pages. So if this interests you, stick around because I'm going to show you how we can do all of that right now. Well, my name is Paul C. This is WP Touch, the channel where we create beautiful WordPress websites together. If this is your first time on the channel, please consider subscribing and clicking that bell icon below to be notified every time new content is added. So today's video is broken into two distinct parts. The first section is all about how we can use Elementor to create a more visual look that ties in with our WordPress website, making sure that those checkout pages have a more consistent look and feel. The second part is we jump over into the functions PHP file and delve into a code a little bit. We're going to take a look at how we can do some basic things with both hooks and filters. But if you want to go a lot further, there will be some resources in the description below. You can check out to get a real depth into how you can use these different functions as part of WooCommerce. So let's just jump over into WordPress now. Let's open up the dashboard and take a look at how we can start creating more bespoke looks using Elemental. So first of all, let's take a little look at the kind of thing that we're going to create. As you can see now, we have a checkout page that has this heading area at the top where we've got a nice scrolling effect. We've got the shopping cart information. We've then got some breadcrumbs underneath. And then what we're doing underneath that is we're using the default layout for our particular theme for the checkout page. So we've added a little bit of customization in. If we come down and we click on proceed to checkout, That'll take us through and you can see then we've got a multi-step checkout and again we've got the same header and we've got the same sort of breadcrumb section underneath this. So this gives us the ability to create a more consistent look and feel throughout our insight and tie it in a little bit more into our design. Now unfortunately we are pretty limited with what we can do to the actual checkout pages themselves. Not so much the design but the forms that are being used in there and without using a third party plugin or something that you want to purchase you do have just a limited range of options. But using a combination of the techniques I'm going to show you using Elementor, some customization in your functions PHP file if you want to delve in there and start tweaking the actual content and a little bit of CSS know-how if you want to really get in and start fine tuning and you can still get something that looks a little less like like your typical default WooCommerce checkout sections. So let's start this off by seeing how we can start to create more custom looking pages using Elementor and Elementor Pro. Then we'll take a look at how we can edit our PHP file and disable and enable various different parts of the actual form themselves. And like I say, if you want to go further on from there, then you can start tying to CSS and so on. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to jump over into the dashboard of WordPress, open up the different pages you want to start editing, and I'll show you then how to create these various different layouts. Now it is worth noting before we move on that the look and the layout of this particular checkout section is all controlled via Ocean WP's theme. So you're going to find if you use a different theme like Generate Press or Astro and so on, you may have different options. But the rest of the sort of session that we're going to go through today should still hold true for whichever theme that you're using. Okay, so let's just jump over to the dashboard and we're into the pages section. So the first thing we're going to do, let's go through this process in order, is the first page we're going to take a look at is the cart page. So we click to edit the cart page. You'll see if we jump back over to the editor for WordPress, the normal default editor, we have a short code in there, which in this case is WooCommerce underscore cart. Now that references the actual cart template that's being used as part of WooCommerce, then loads that into our page. So we can still use the page builder, whether it's Elementor or any other page builder you want to use, and you can still go in and start to edit and create more customized layouts. With this, with Ocean WP, I've just set a couple of other things. I've made sure that my design is 100% full width and I've disabled any of the default margins just to make sure that I've ended up, which is the header and the footer and any content that's using the short code and no additional spaces and things that are going to make my design just a little bit more complicated. So we're going to do jump into edit with Elementor. That'll automatically pull in the short code that's being used for the cart. And it'll then show a predefined look of what that looks like as part of our theme. And as you can see, because I've got a product added to my cart, that's showing up in there. If I didn't, I would just have the option that says, your cart is currently empty. Do you want to proceed to shopping? So that's the reason why you're seeing this. If you don't have anything added to your cart, you'll just see that default message telling you there's nothing in your cart. Okay, so now we can go ahead and start using the different tools that we have inside Elementor. So what we're going to do is going to come up, we're going to click to add a new row in there. We'll say we want to put in a single row column. We're going to set this to stretch the section, believe the content boxed. Then what we're going to do is a jump over to the style section. We're going to come into our background type. We're going to set a background in there. And we've already uploaded something that I want to use. So we're going to come down, find the image that I want, which is this one, insert my media. Now we're going to tweak just a couple of the settings on there. So position I'm going to set to be sent to center. 
the attachment I'm going to set to be fixed so it fixes the background and then ultimately we're going to come in and we say we want no repeat and the size to be cover. So that puts the background image in there. Next thing we're going to do is just come to the background overlay and we're simply going to put in just a plain vanilla color, set that to black for this example and 0.5 for the opacity. That just gives us a nice solid background which we can then use to display our heading over. So drag and drop that heading in there. We'll center that off and we'll just say this is shopping cart or whatever you actually call yours on your particular store. Jump into our style section and we're going to set our text color to be a nice white. We're using the default font sort of part of this design. Come into the typography and we'll just bump that up to, let's go for something like 40 pixels. That'll look good. And we'll leave everything else as is. And finally, we just come into the advanced section and we'll just put a little bit of padding in this. So we're going to set 150 top, 150 bottom, just so it gives us a nice clean heading to work with. Next up, we're going to come in and we're going to add a new row in there. So add a new row, same again, single. We're going to set that in there. And what we can do now is we can just come in and we can set this to be our breadcrumbs. So what we're going to do is select that, come into the style, set a really light background color, which we're going to set to a very, very pale gray, a couple of shades down, that'll do. Next up, we're going to come into our border section. We're going to set this to be a solid border. We're going to set the bottom width to be one pixel. And we're going to set that to be a slightly darker gray just so we have some separation in there. And finally, we're going to come in, oops. Finally, we're going to come into the advanced section and we're going to add a little bit of padding to the top and bottom. So we'll just put 20 top, 20 bottom, just so this fits in. Now, obviously you don't need to do this. If you have breadcrumbs set up in your theme, you may have that display on this particular page for you automatically. If not, as you can see, you can customize it. So come back into our widgets and we're going to do breadcrumbs and we've got the WooCommerce breadcrumbs. We'll drop that in there. We'll set that to be right. We'll just adjust the size of the typography on there, set that to 10 pixels, and we'll leave everything else. Actually, set that to 12. It's a little small. That looks good. Okay, so we'll hit update on there. So we've now created our more customized shopping page or shopping cart page. If we need to add any padding, we can do that on any of the different elements on here. Now, because we're going to do this again, and we want to apply this to other pages in our site, the easiest thing to do is come up to the edit section, right click, and we'll say we want to save this as a template. What we'll do then is we'll give it a name and we'll call this shop page header, whatever you want to call it that makes sense to you. And we'll say OK on there. I'll save that out and we'll close that down and we'll do the same then for our breadcrumbs. We'll right click and we'll say save as template and we'll just call this shop page breadcrumbs. Okay. So we'll save those. So we've now created those templates. We can quickly apply and make any changes you want to other pages. So we're done with this page now. We don't need to update because we've already done that. So we're going to come out of this, exit to the dashboard, and we'll just repeat that process then for the other pages. We'll come back to all our pages. This time we'll choose the checkout. We'll say edit with Elementor. Once that's done, we can load those templates in, and we are pretty much done on that section. So let's just do that quickly. Let's just add the new ones in there, add a template. Jump over to my templates and what we want is the shop page header. Insert that in there. Yes, we'll say fine for that. And finally, we do the same again. So we'll come in, add new widget or new template, I should say, and insert the breadcrumbs. And yes. So that's now the two pages created with our breadcrumbs, with everything else in place. We can update that and we are now pretty much done. So let's just test those pages out. You can see I'm back in the section of my shop. So all we're going to do now is we can add anything we want. So let's just say add this to the basket. Then we can come up, view our basket. As you can see, there's our new header. There's our breadcrumbs. If we scroll down now and we click on proceed to checkout, you'll see that has taken us to the checkout page and we've got everything set up in there, all nice and tidy, pulled in from those templates. So there's the first part of it. We've now customized this to tie it in a little better to the design we want for our entire site. But what if we want to disable or change things about these different uh, sort of form sections? Well, other than the things you can enable and disable as part of your theme, and like I say, Ocean WP does have a ton of really cool WooCommerce sort of customization options. If you want to go beyond that, we need to get in there and start making some changes to the functions PHP file. Okay, so that's how we use Elementor to create more distinct looking checkout pages in WooCommerce. Like I say, this is still kind of limited at the moment and I'm hoping in the future we'll get a lot more control over how we can do various different things inside the checkout and cart pages of WooCommerce. For now, this is a good way of creating something that just ties in a little bit better with your branding and your overall website.
Now the second part we're going to jump into is where we can take a look at dealing with the function's PHP file, delve into some code and make some changes to the form itself. Now this is something I'm only going to scratch the surface of because there is a ton of information out there on how to do this and it's beyond the scope of this introduction video to really go into too much detail but what it'll do hopefully is pique your interest and allow you to get an idea of just some of the things that you can do just by using this function PHP file, some hooks and filters from WooCommerce. Now there's two important things you need to do before you start editing and playing about with changing anything through the function's PHP file of your WordPress site. First and most importantly is back your entire site up so if anything happens you've got a copy of your site you can reinstate quickly and easily and put back any of those changes and any of those problems you may have caused with minimal fuss. The second and the second most important thing is to make sure that you have or you create a child theme. Now if you're using something like Ocean WP or Astra or any of these great themes, you have the option to download and install and then activate a child theme. Now the child theme has an important role. It creates a couple of key files, primarily this custom, uh, the CSS file that's being used for the entire styles throughout the site, and secondly, a blank version of the function PHP file. So any changes you want to make should always be made inside there. Then when you update your main theme, the child theme is not affected. It'll update all the things that need to be updated, but any changes you've made, any modifications you've done via the CSS file or the function's PHP file will be left intact alongside the updated version of the theme. So always make sure you do that every time you create any kind of customization to your WooCommerce or your WordPress websites. So with those warnings out the way, let's take a look at the function's PHP file itself. Now there are a couple of ways you can access this and depending upon how you're working will depend upon how you actually access it. I'm working on a local machine so I can just access it either directly through the sort of text file itself or I can go in through the dashboard of WordPress and I can edit via that. If you're doing this online, I would always recommend either using an FTP client to do it so you can access the file directly or to use the actual sort of file management tools you have as part of your hosting account. This means that if you make a mistake and your website goes down because you put something incorrect into this function's PHP file, you can make the edit and do all those kinds of things without doing it inside the dashboard of WordPress itself. Now for this example, I'm going to go through that method of using it through the dashboard just because it's simple and easy just to show you exactly what's going on. But like I say, I would recommend doing it one of those other two ways just because if something goes wrong, you can pull that back up very quickly and easily. Okay, so to access it, we come into the appearance and go into editor. And inside there, we've got a couple of files. Now, because this is a child theme, as you can see, Ocean WP child, I've only got style sheet and functions and a readme file. So we're going to open up the theme functions, which is the function PHP file. And as you can see, there's just one little block of code in there, which is to use this specific to the, the child theme for Ocean WP. What we're going to do, though, is start off really simple. Now, I'm not going to type these things in by hand. I'm going to copy and paste them over, but I'm also going to link to the documentation for this where you can see exactly how all these different things work. So let's start off really simple. Let's just go back to our checkout page. And as you can see, we've got the order notes at the bottom, and we've got this notes about your order, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Let's just say we wanted to change the content that's in there, either the, the actual title itself, the sort of name for that field, or the content that's actually inside the field itself. Well, if we just jump back over into our functions PHP file, I'm going to put a little bit of code in there, and I'm just going to explain just the basics of what's going on with that block of code. So let's just paste the block in. And as you can see, that puts in some additional code. Now this add filter is telling WooCommerce that you're gonna add some filters in and make some changes or some additions or remove various different elements. Now these hooks are the basis of how you make these alterations throughout WooCommerce. The nice thing with this is you're not messing about with extra files. You can do a lot of the things you need directly inside this function's PHP file. So what it's doing is it's telling you that the WooCommerce checkout fields are custom override checkout fields. In other words, it's telling it wants to custom override. So that's the action you're doing. It's telling it it's in the WooCommerce checkout field. So you've got various different sections of the checkout process you can reference. Then it says this is our hooked in function. So the string fields is passed via the filter. So it's filtering out and it's saying what field is going to be filtered. So you can see we've got order, order comments, placeholder, and order, order comments, label. So we just jump back over, there's the label, there's the comments. So we've got the various different aspects we can pull in there. So you can see we've got the placeholder. We can change that from what's currently there, which is this section, 
notes about your order. We'll leave that to my new placeholder. We'll just leave that in there for now. And then we've got my new label and we can change that to your order comments. And there we go. So we can just use this copy and paste method and then we can make the changes manually to change the various different elements that we want to tweak or adjust. So if we update that now and refresh the actual checkout page, we should see the changes we just made. And there we go. So you can take a look now and we can see your order comments and my new placeholder. So the changes you just made have been reflected in that particular part of the form. What about if we want to take something out, we want to actually remove it from the form itself. Let's just say we don't want to allow people to put comments in there. Well, again, we can use those hooks inside the functions PHP file to disable and enable various different fields and components. So let's take a look at that next. So let's just drop in the new piece of code. And again, you can see we've got the filter, which is what we're going to do. You can see then it's referencing again the WooCommerce checkout fields. This time we've got remove order notes as opposed to where we had previously where we could override the actual labels that were being used in there and so on. And then we've got the function itself. So unset, in other words, remove that from the array, the list of fields that are going to be used. And it's telling it in the order section and the order comments. So if we update that file and then we jump back over into our checkout, refresh that page and take a look, we should then find that that particular field, the comments field, has now been taken out. And there we go, we take a look at our page, you can see our comment section has now been removed. So this gives you a good indication of the kinds of things you can do all through the functions PHP file using the hooks and the filters that are part of WooCommerce itself. Now this is literally just scratching the surface of the kind of things you can do with these hooks and filters as part of WooCommerce and the functions PHP file. But hopefully what's demonstrated is the power of this and how you can get in and start to customize and tweak both the look and the structure of the forms that you're using as you check out inside WooCommerce itself. Just to remember to make sure that if you make any changes like this, you always back up your site and do it safely so you don't end up ruining the entire site and all the work you've done in it without the ability to get it back. So take a backup, use a child theme, take your time. And like I say, if you want to take a look at the documentation, I'll put a link in the description below that will take you through in a lot more detail what can be done with these hooks and filters as part of WooCommerce. So there we go, that's what I'm gonna wrap up today's video. Hopefully what's demonstrated is that you can use a combination of the visual editor like Elementor or any of the other visual editors out there. And you can use that alongside editing some code in the functions PHP file to really start to get in and tweak the look and the style of your particular WooCommerce checkout. Like I said in the video at the beginning, if you wanna go in further with this, then you could start to tie this in with something like CSS Hero or hand coding some CSS, where you can then really get in and fine tune various different aspects of the actual checkout itself. If you want to get even further, you could jump over into the template sections and start editing the actual physical layout of those different sort of sections of your checkout section. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. But let me know below why you didn't enjoy the video. It helps me create better content for you moving forward. As always, if you'd like to help support the channel, please consider using those affiliate links in the description below. It gives a small percentage back to the channel, doesn't cost you any more money, but it helps us create more great content for you. As always, I'd love to get your feedback on this video, so pop any questions, comments, anything at all in that comment section below. Let's get our conversation started. Well, as always, my name's been Paul C. This has been WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.